We've got a Polar Vantage, a Biostrap Evo, and an Aura third generation. Let's see how they compare at tracking my sleep and readiness scores. Hey guys, Alex here from alexfocus.com and in this video I'm looking at the Aura Ring third generation, the Biostrap Evo, and the Polar Vantage V2. Now I'm comparing the sleep and readiness data points from these three devices. I'm gonna look at, you know, how well, well, not necessarily how well, just look at the differences between sleep, uh, the differences between things such as resting heart rate, uh, respiration rate, heart rate variability. Uh, so what I've been doing is I've been wearing all three of these devices for the last few nights. Well, I've been using them for a lot longer than that, but I've taken uh, three nights worth of data and we're gonna go through and compare you know, things like I said, like the deep sleep score, uh, heart rate variability, all those sort of things, and see if any of, uh, or see if it all aligns. And if not, then what data is off? Now, uh, I know these aren't, um, well, the thing is, a lot of people use these devices and, you know, it, the data has a big impact on their day. Oh, the, you know, you might wake up and you've had a really bad sleep, so you don't train as much that day, for instance. But, what if that data is you know, totally flawed, like not even close to being accurate? Then of course, it can have a bad influence, I guess, on, on your decision making. So, what we're gonna do here, I have already crunched all the numbers and I've got a pretty good um, Excel spreadsheet here to compare all the data, but we're gonna pull up each night's sleep and readiness scores for each of these devices. Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pull up the screens uh, of all three of these apps, so the Aura Ring, the Polar, and the Biostrat. Uh, we're gonna have it all on screen at once. Hopefully it's not gonna be too busy and hopefully it works. And um, we'll go through each night. I've got three nights worth of data. I also um, have been having naps each day, so we can look at the nap data as well. And we'll be able to compare them all and I'll be able to point out any big issues or observations. So. Let's get into it. Okay, so before we get into the comparisons, if you're familiar uh, with my work, you'll know that I've been using the Aura Ring for many years now. I've done a couple of reviews, so I'll put links to them below. I do like the Aura Ring for the sleep um, and recovery tracking. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I know it's not perfect, but um, it is something I continue to use. Uh, this is the third gen ring and it does nap tracking. So I have been having naps, so we'll be looking at that. Uh, the Biostrap Evo here, um, I've had this for a while, but I don't really use it. I, I put it on now and then. Um, there's a couple reasons why I don't like using it. Um, I, it's a little bit chunky for me. Um, the syncing time takes ages. And with my other two devices, I use the Aura and the Polar. I feel like it's a bit redundant, uh, but I do have a full review on my blog and I believe on YouTube as well, so I'll put a link to that. Um, the Polar Vantage smartwatch, uh, this, oh, and sorry, the Biostrap also does nap tracking. Uh, the Vantage, the biggest downside here that I have is it doesn't detect nap, nap tracking. So pretty much because uh, a couple times a week I'm having a nap, uh, that means a lot of my sleep recovery sort of data from this is, is not very useful because it's missing out on you know those hour-long naps but I use this for training uh, and recovery I use this for my sleep and, and recovery as well um, so now I should note that I use the aura ring on my non-dominant hand index finger which I think is the recommended position I use this on my non-dominant wrist so my left wrist same as the aura ring and I've been wearing the bio strap on my right wrist Okay, so the first thing we're gonna look at is the sleep data across these three devices for Saturday. Okay, so the first thing you actually notice is the Biostrap and the Aura Ring screens are quite um, similar looking. Uh, in fact, I, I like them, they work really well. I don't like the Polar app, it just, to be honest, the Polar app is just hard to read when it comes to sleep, and even when you go onto the website and you, you pull up the Flow Dash, as it's called, it's the same, it's quite messy. I actually prefer getting the data straight from the Ring, uh, sorry, from the watch itself. It just makes it so simpler. So the first thing I'm looking at is the in-bed time. Now, the Aura Ring uh, was saying I was in bed from uh, 21 minutes past 11 through to 7 a.m. The Biostrap was pretty close to that, 10 to midnight through to quarter to seven. The Polar was quite a lot different there. It said I was in bed um, 10 past midnight and got up at 6.30. So there's quite a big difference between the Aura and the Polar uh, readings there, but I actually don't put too much waiting on the in-bed time because, you know, 
many of us have gone to bed and it's taken an hour to fall asleep, right? And you don't count that as sleep, do you? So, um, Aura and Biostrap do really good here because they put a lot of emphasis on your actual sleep time. The Polar, on the other hand, records that whole time in bed as your sleep time, which I don't like. You actually have to dive a little bit deeper into the, um, into the app, you scroll down a little bit, and then it shows your actual sleep. So I, I don't like that because like I said, you can be lying there in bed or you wake up early and hey, that's not sleep, is it? Um, so the key figures I'm gonna look at here are the actual sleep figures. Now for Saturday, the Aura Ring came out at five hours and 59 minutes, the Biostrap five hours and 52 minutes, and the Polar was five hours, 30 minutes. So nearly a 29 minute difference, but what's good is the Aura and the Biostrap are only seven minutes apart, so that is interesting. When we look at the breakdown of the sleep, um, Aura do deep, REM and light, Biostrap only do deep and light and the Polar do deep and REM. So it's a little bit hard confusing them all. The only one that's uh, the same across all three is deep. Now for Saturday, uh, all of them came in around 20%. The Aura Ring 22%, Biostrap 20 and the Polar was um, 22% as well. So that's really, really good. Uh, and when you compare, but when you compare the REM sleep, Aura was 18%, Polar 9%. So that's quite a, quite a large difference. Light was, was similar between Aura and Biostrap though. So from Saturday, Saturday night's data, you'd have to say that the Aura and the Biostrap are quite similar. I mean, it's, it's very closely aligned. Uh, so that's interesting because, you know, one's a wrist strap on my right hand and the other's a ring on my left hand. So um, yeah, interesting to see that they line up really well. The Polar, a uh, little bit off there. And, and of course, I don't know which one's right. Okay, I don't know, you know, maybe the Polar's bang on the money and these ones are off, but I just want to do the comparison. What is interesting though is I had a nap that next day or the morning. Um, now the Aura Ring said I only got 40 minutes nap where the Biostrap said it was an hour. Now it was definitely an hour. The Aura Ring actually said I was awake in the middle of the nap, which is just um, a little bit crazy when you think about it. Typically when you wake from a nap, that's it. Uh, I, I wasn't awake. So the Biostrap was correct there. Uh, and that's a 20 minute difference. Does impact you know your overall sleep scores and your readiness score. So maybe that's a, a point for uh, the Biostrap over the Aura Ring for that night's sleep. Okay, now let's look at Sunday night. What's interesting again is the Aura and the Biostrap both had similar uh, in bed times. They both, in fact, they would bang on uh, six minutes past midnight. The Polar said I wasn't in bed till nearly 1 a.m. Um, there was quite a difference though with the getting out of bed times, a half an hour difference there with Polar coming in in the middle. When we look at actual sleep, five hours 20 for the Aura Ring, five hours 10 or five hours nine for the Biostrap, and four hours 47 for the Polar. So again, Aura and, Aura and Biostrap are quite similar. Polar was, was well off to the side, I guess. Um, now when we look at the actual breakdowns, here we get some discrepancies. So deep sleep for the Aura was 45%, which is huge. Uh, 26 for the Biostrap and 14 for the Polar. So massive difference between 14 and 45. To be fair, I think 45% deep sleep is a little bit crazy. Uh, and the Biostrap's probably on the money in the middle there, but I'm just guessing there. The light sleep between the Aura and the Biostrap, pretty even, 42 and 48. Now what's interesting is that day I had a nap and the Biostrap was on the money here, picked up the hour and nine minutes uh, nap. Polar, remember, doesn't detect naps, so no data there, which is a big blow, I reckon. And the Aura Ring didn't pick up the nap. Now, I've had this happen a few times where I've had like 15 minute naps. You know, you go lie down for half an hour, or you go lie down and half an hour later, you're sort of alert, and you, you, you realize you've been in bed for half an hour, so you may have got 10, 15 minutes nap. And the Aura Ring hasn't picked that up, and you think, oh, okay, it must have been too short. But a big nap like that, as you can see, my sleep has been pretty rough of late. Um, various reasons and I'm staying up late so I'm banking I'm relying on those daytime naps right and I'm having good naps you know hour long hour and a half sometimes again Biostrap and Aura are quite similar but I think you'd have to give the Biostrap the um the advantage here as well because the deep sleep was 26 versus the 45 on the Aura ring which just seems crazy and the Biostrap picked up the nap so yeah uh that's that's two nights to the Biostrap all right, so now we look at Monday. Now what's interesting on Monday is all of the devices had pretty similar in bed times, uh, 11.30, 11.50, and 11.42, and, all, and they all had similar wake up times as well, which is, which is good. But when we look at actual sleep here, we have five hours 51 for the Aura, five hours 12 for the Biostrap, and six hours three minutes for the Polar. So 
It's probably the biggest uh, range that we've seen, and the bias strap was the, the lowest amount there uh, with the aura coming in in the middle. When we look at deep sleep, we have 30% for the aura ring, 31% for the bio, and 16% for the polar. So again, what's, what's the deal here? I mean, they're all over the place, aren't they? Like 16 versus 31. Um, it's so, yeah, I mean, these wearables really are all over the place. It would be cool to have done a proper lab test as well and have like proper lab data to compare with this and then you could say hey look you know this particular device was bang on it's something i've always wanted to do there's just no facilities around where i live uh, to get that done and it would mean you know being away from home we've got a newborn and a little kid and um you know it's just not going to happen but maybe one one day in the future now what's really interesting this day which is today i had another nap now the aura ring said i napped for 44 minutes and the bias trap didn't pick it up what's up with that <laughs> like <laughs> What's going on? I mean, I, I couldn't believe it. I was like checking the device again. I synced it. I was like, has it not loaded it? But no, I just it didn't pick up the nap. So here I am on Sunday saying, hey, look, you know, the aura dropped the ball because it didn't detect an hour long nap. Now the bias strap didn't detect a 44, 45 minute nap. So yeah, what do you do? And of course the Polar didn't detect naps at all. So anyway, that's the sleep data. Now, what can I say from all of that? Is there one that just looks like it's the best or, you know, it's consistent across the board? Well, unfortunately, no. If, if the Biostrap had detected that nap today, um, I probably would have said, you know, it's, it's looking like it's the best. Of course, I don't have um, accurate data. Like, I don't have the medical data to, to refer it to. So I can't say, you know, this one's bang on. But looking at all of this, I'd say the Biostrap was probably a little bit more on the money. Though... For reasons I mentioned early on, I'll probably still continue using the Aura Ring. It's just easier to wear, it's slimmer, smaller. And I've always known it's not 100% perfect. Like you look at the data some days and you're like, yeah, that, that I wasn't awake then or I was awake then and it's staying asleep. But it's more the trends I'm looking at, you know, overall heart rate variability, overall sleep amount, overall resting heart rate, all of those sort of things. Um, and it's, it's pretty clear, like, if you get a bad sleep, it'll say it's got a bad sleep. So I can look back at my trends and I can see when our baby was born or when you know I went away or whatever it may be because the data does change. It might not be super precise, but it does pick up on those big changes. The Polar um, Vantage though, yeah, a little bit disappointing there, especially with the nap detection and some of the some of the readings are quite far off the other two. So you have to wonder how accurate it is there. But again, I don't use this for um, recovery as such, it's more, well, I do use it for recovery some, using some of the test features in here, but it's more training. So I'm not too worried. This is why I keep using these two for my rowing training. Okay, what about the readiness data? Let's pull all that up. So this is where I'm looking at minimum heart rate, average heart rate variability, and respiration rates. Now, this is something that hopefully we do see a lot of alignment. So we'll pull up this data now. Again, we've got Aura, Biostrap, and Polar. Now, for the Saturday, minimum heart rate, uh, we had... 50 beats per minute with the Aura Ring and 49 with the Biostrap Evo. For the Polar, I couldn't get the minimum. I could only get an average, so I've left that off there. Uh, for the average heart rate variability, 54 with Aura, 70 for the Biostrap and 57 for, for the Polar. And then for respiration rate, 15.4, 15.3, and 14.1. The heart rate was similar for two days. Heart rate, average heart rate variability was, yeah, it's, I mean, it's really all over the place. Like, and there's a big difference between 15.4 and 14.1 respiration rate, right? Um, it's a downside with these wearables, isn't it? Okay, let's look at Sunday. So we've got minimum heart rate pretty much on point. Uh, the two devices, 48 and 47, so that's good. Heart rate variability was a lot more uh, aligned here. 61, 66, and 68, so that is good. Respiration rate, 14.8, 14.8, and 13.7. So the Polar is obviously not as good as picking up respiration rate or... It is got an accurate reading, and the other two devices don't. It's interesting though, again, because um, one's a ring and one's a uh, wristband. When we look at the Monday's data, again, the, the heart rate between the Aura and the, the bio strap is pretty much bang on, so that's good. Heart rate variability again though is quite far off. Um, what's interesting though is the heart rate variability between the Aura and the, the Polar has, um, has been quite similar um, across yeah, across all the nights, so that's interesting. Uh, it's really the bias strap that was quite off on the heart rate variability. And to be fair, there's lots of ways they can crunch the heart rate variability numbers. So 
Maybe it's not the best metric to be comparing for those reasons, but I wanted to include it anyway. Respiration rate, again, Aura and Biostrap are pretty much bang on. Polar is quite low. So what do you make of those? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. The thing is, you're gonna pick up trends, aren't you? If your heart rate is going down over time, the device will pick it up. It might be not be bang on. Uh, if your respiration rate's going up, I'm sure the devices will pick it up. But if I'm wearing this and I see my heart rate is, or heart rate variability and respirate is X, and I'm talking to a mate who's got an aura ring and his is Y, I don't think it's really accurate to, to compare and, and say, oh, well, I'm better recovered than him because of these reasons. So, yeah, I mean, it would have been cool if everything lined up and be like, wow, all these devices must be bang on. But really all it's doing is, is confusing people and confusing matters, isn't it? So someone like me who has access to lots of devices, you know, I, I'm now going to walk away thinking, yeah, is that really right? Like when I see uh, my um, polis say, hey, you know, back off today, I might be like, well, my aura ring's saying, hey, I'm in a good recovery state, so, you know, I'm gonna train anyway, all right? And to be honest, I've always done that anyway. Like, some days I feel really good and I'm about to train, like I'm due to train, but my aura says, hey, you've got a really bad recovery or readiness score, but I'm like, no, I'm gonna train, you know, and vice versa, it's happened the other way as well. Um, it's what I do like the Polar for. The Polar's got like the leg recovery test where you just do jump squats and it will tell you how fresh your legs are, which is really good if I'm going to do like, plan on doing like a power day or a big, you know, leg session day. I might actually change that if the number's really low. And I feel like that's worked really good for, you know, um, for determining how I'm feeling, uh, how my legs are feeling. I feel like that correlates really well. But saying that you often notice it, like if your legs are just, not online and you start warming up and the warm up is extremely heavy or hard, you know, okay, maybe you should back off. So anyway, hey, look, I just wanted to put this data out there because um, I thought it'd be interesting and um, I was curious and I thought, hey, you know what, uh, let's do it properly and track it all and put it in a spreadsheet and, and we'll do a video. So uh, look, if you've enjoyed this, let me know, uh, leave a likes and a thumbs up. If there's anything else you want to know, like there's more data you want to see or something you want me to experiment with or another device maybe to compare, um, let me know as well. If you use multiple devices, uh, maybe you know, you got some of these devices or different devices and you've noticed discrepancies, yeah, I'm keen to hear your stories as well. I mean, I've even heard of people wearing the same device, you know, two Fitbits for instance, on their arm and getting different readings. So, you know, it's, it's end of the day, there's a couple hundred dollar gadgets, right? Like it's, we're not going into a laboratory and having tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, connected to us and expecting amazing things. But still, you know, I thought it'd be interesting to put this out. So hope you've enjoyed it. If you want to see reviews on any of these products, uh, I'll put links to it below. I haven't reviewed the Polar. I may do that once I've used it a bit more uh, in the coming weeks or months. Otherwise, be sure to hang around because I've got a huge other videos. So thanks again and I'll see you later.